is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you, Gabe. Awesome, thanks. Hey, so my name is Gabe. I am one of the PGY4 chief residents uh, here at UC Davis. I did do my uh, intern year here as well. There are two categorical spots as well as two advanced spots. So happy to answer questions about the both. Um, as questions are coming in, feel free to throw them in the chat. We also have um, Joe Hornack, uh, fellow chief resident um, in the chat, as well as Kevin Nazare, uh, second year, who is uh, agreed to help out. So feel free to fire them off and we can kind of answer them as we go in the chat, even though I might not respond to them directly. Um, so we have uh, here our class of 2023. Um, our class is currently expanding. Uh, we were at three residents per class, um, expanding to four residents um, each year. So by the time uh, your accepted class will come through, um, it will be a complement of 12 residents total. Um, looking at our program, we have our program director, Dr. Lauren Davidson. He's a pediatric rehab physician, um, works both at Shriners as well as at UC Davis, um, specializes in spinal cord injuries for pediatrics. Um, and our assistant program director, uh, Dr. Vandenacker, um, who was previously the program director, they did a switch and she is uh, looking towards retirement probably in the next four years. Um, she keeps extending it out uh, because she loves being here so much, um, but she wanted to stick around and make sure that uh, Dr. Davidson was able to get uh, his feet off the ground. His uh, first year was actually my first year and it's been absolutely phenomenal to see him grow into the position of the program director take charge of the program. Um, looking at our department faculty overall, we have Craig McDonald, who is the chair of the department, is one of the leading researchers in Duchenne's West dystrophy. Um, Dr. Patton is a PhD uh, scientist who focuses mainly on locomotion. Um, she's based out of the UC Davis campus, which is um, in Davis proper, as opposed to UC Davis Health, which is based out of Sacramento. Um, Dr. Waite is our sports uh, fellowship uh, leader, and she also um, does some teamwork, but primarily is the leader of the sports clinic that we have. And Christian is kind of our Swiss Army knife, graduated from UC Davis and really kind of fills most holes we need. Um, the rest of the associate professors will kind of go through as we go clinic by clinic. Um, but as you can see, there's, we have quite a few. I think one of the strengths of this program uh, is the faculty to resident ratio being two to one really limits anything from being a resident driven clinic. So it's really can focus on your education uh, and having the faculty, the people who you're gonna be learning from uh, available to you uh, has been huge for us. Looking at our rotations, this is the sample schedule um, for this coming year, obviously, you can see that the PGY3s, there's only three of them, but the rest will kind of fill in that uh, fourth spot. The way the rotations work here is everything kind of cycles back. So as opposed to having one core block, which I think is, there's kind of two different ways that you'll see um, clinic schedule as you hear about different programs. One being, you'll get all of your experience for one, you'll get a rotation of spinal cord injury, a rotation of TBI, a rotation of EMGs. Um, the way we do it is a little bit more uh, cyclical. So you kind of revisit the same topics um, year after year. And PGY2 year, that means that you're kind of getting exposed to everything. You get sports, you get spine, you get TBI, you get spinal cord injury, you get neuromuscular disease. Um, and it definitely can be a whirlwind because you're seeing everything for the first time. You get to revisit that as a PGY3 and 
everything comes back a little bit easier. And by the time you rotate as a PGY4, you feel really confident um, and things are coming back even faster. And you're starting to take more of a, a leadership role in teaching. Um, and initially I, I had questions about it. It wasn't until I reached PGY4 that I understood the, the benefit for that. Um, as you can see, kind of PGY2 is uh, the, the ward's junior role um, and ward senior. So our, our inpatient wards um, is run by both a junior and a senior resident of two and a three. Um, and all of our consults are saved uh, for the PGY4 year. Uh, looking at the PGY4 year, the E4 elective block um, is a four week elective that you are able to create for yourself. Um, and I think one of the best parts about that is that you can go anywhere. If you want to go outside of Davis, th that's okay. They will continue to pay your salary and you can go work at uh, either away rotations. Um, we have uh, one of our other co-residents right now. Uh, Brandon is uh, up at University of Washington because he's uh, looking to do a sports fellowship right now. So he's out there. I'm gonna be doing a couple of rotations uh, to try and do my job hunt, not going for a fellowship, but a general application uh, up in Oregon. Um, Joe's also kind of planning some, some of his own things outside of uh, UC Davis. So they've been fantastic about accommodating us for um, getting exposures that we, we may feel that we're lacking or feel like we want to expand on. Um, I want to briefly touch on the intern year. I think that it's a fantastic experience. Um, it's a tailored uh, intern year, so it's Kind of like a transitional year that's specifically targeted for PM&R. You get exposure with neurosurgery, with ortho spine, um, as well as with general surgery. The general surgery, they kind of put you more on the, the vascular side of things so you can deal a lot with the amputations. Um, and obviously we get a majority of our inpatients from the neurosurgery and orthopedic surgeons. Um, separate from that, you need to have a solid medicine knowledge so we get a good amount of medicine experience. Um, and we even get to come home, we say, for a month and go visit PM&R for a month as well. Um, it's just kind of a further written breakdown of what our different clinics look like. Um, the MSK clinics are mixed. Um, in the past, they had done it where MSK was strictly sports and then rehab was strictly rehab. Um, they had found, and, and I would agree with, that it's kind of a, a better to, to meld it in because certainly some of those clinics can be more taxing than others. Um, so the MSK clinics really focusing, it's probably about 50% of your time in the sports and spine clinics. Uh, with a day, probably a day and a half of EMG and then a half day of SCI. Um, whereas on the rehab blocks, you're doing uh, a day of amputee, a day of peds. Um, every other week you do a full day of NMD, either general NMD, uh, neuromuscular disease, or uh, ALS specific clinic, which is a multidisciplinary clinic that we have. Uh, we incorporate EMGs as well into that and have been having VA clinics as well. Um, and yeah, I think better to see them a little bit more specifically. So here we have our um, new building that we have for our ACCs, the Lawrence Ellison ACC building, um, where we get our outpatient general and subspecialty clinics. Um, I'd say that this is probably one of our strengths is our neuromuscular disease clinic. Obviously, Dr. McDonald is one of the leaders in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy research. Um, Dr. Joyce runs our ALS uh, clinic. Uh, as well as a, a general neuromuscular disease clinic for adults. Um, she's also leading a number of trials in spinal muscular atrophy. Um, Dr. Williams does neuromuscular disease as well. She's fellowship trained through our fellowship, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, and does a lot of sp spasticity management. Uh, so the ALS clinic specifically with Dr. Joyce and then the spasticity management. Um, other people here, uh, Dr. Arsenault, who's one of our PEDS uh, rehabilitation doctors specializing in CP. Um, and Dr. Dorsett, who does a general clinic as well. Um, we get great exposure here into pump refills as well as uh, Botox administration. They get you in right away from day one, you're doing these procedures, which has been great for making you feel comfortable about getting out into practice. Um, spinal cord injury clinic as well, that's, uh, you do a half day um, on your outpatient MSK blocks. Um, you also get exposure to acupuncture, um, both auricular and body acupuncture with Dr. Zhao at the VA, um, which has been a great experience. I think that I probably have over 100 and probably about 100 patients um, that I've gotten to do auricular acupuncture on, which has made me feel comfortable and something that I'll probably incorporate into my practice, which felt like was a pretty unique experience. 
Um, getting good MPT uh, coverage. It's a great multidisciplinary clinic where they bring in local prosthetists who have a wealth of knowledge that they're able to share with you. Um, our PEDS is pretty strong here. And I think a lot of that is related to our affiliation with the Shriners Children's Hospital. It's right across the street and it is a great place to work. Um, you get to work with Dr. Davidson who does pediatric spinal cord injuries. Um, Dr. Evans, who does spina bifida, as we refer to it as Shrina Bifida Clinic. Um, you get cerebral palsy clinic with both Dr. Davidson and Dr. Arsenal. Dr. Evans also has a day of that as well. Um, one of the cool things that you have at Shriners is kind of up in that left-hand screen there um, is the gait analysis laboratory. And with all of the clinics, you get to work closely with orthopedic surgeons as well. Um, while I'm very glad that I'm not personally doing orthopedic surgery, I think that their uh, knowledge base is fantastic for budding physiatrists to be able to learn from. And uh, as opposed to maybe adult orthopedic surgeons, the pediatric orthopedic surgeons are a pleasure to work with. Um, the other clinics that we have, uh, Dr. Arsenal does a limb deficiency MPT clinic. Um, Shriners is fantastic because they cover everything, nonprofit means the patients don't have to pay for anything and they can get the coolest toys. Um, and that means that we get to experiment with a lot of the, the newer technology that's out there. Um, Dr. Joyce leads a brachial plexus birth palsy clinic, which gets you great knowledge of the brachial plexus, important for any physiatrist. Um, and Dr. Ingwersen is a pediatric sports medicine doctor who does a fantastic job with uh, teaching ultrasound medicine and injections. Looking at our spine program, uh, we have our outpatient sports and spine um, located in C Street. It's about a half mile from the main campus. Uh, very bikeable, um, but also a quick drive. Um, we have seven sports medicine faculty right now. We're looking to hire an eighth. Um, so we have great exposure. Uh, in the middle left is Dr. Faustin. He is family medicine trained, but uh, works with us in the PM&R department. She is the USA team gymnastics physician. Um, so she is a wealth of knowledge, a very welcomed addition to our family. Um, there is a, a number of opportunities for sports coverage coming through us, as well as having a sports medicine fellow um, kind of affords us some unique opportunities. So we're the team physicians for the Sac Republic, which is the soccer team in Sacramento. Um, every year we do the coverage for the California International Marathon, which is uh, the last qualifier before the Boston Marathon and also one of the flattest marathons. So you get quite a good turnout each year for that. Um, there's also opportunities to get sideline exposure um, with UC Davis Athletics, um, as well as some local high school teams if interested. Uh, like I had mentioned, we have the California Marathon that we do every year. That's probably our biggest uh, sports medicine event in addition to World Strongest Man, which has been coming through Sacramento every year. Um, also, the, the spine program, outpatient spine, uh, this is non-interventional, so more diagnostic spine. It's great. You get to work in the same building with um, neurosurgery and orthosurgery, so you can get patients care uh, quickly if they, they end up needing surgery. Um, another unique uh, clinic that we have is a post-polio clinic. So Dr. Vandenacker is one of kind of the leaders nationally in uh, post-polio. We had a patient in clinic last Friday come from Mexico City. Um, for evaluation. Uh, the post-polio patient population is kind of dwindling, um, but it's a great opportunity to learn bracing um, because as they age, you really get your, a good chance to show off your skills um, and how to functionally brace someone for weakness. Um, inpatient rehab uh, is done both at Shriners for Pediatrics as well as at the UC Davis Main Hospital. Um, our team here is celebrating our last Aloha Friday with our uh, exiting fourth year Jordan, who's now uh, an attending over in Hawaii. Um, it's a very laid back group, but the, the family vibe is really there. Uh, everyone has a, a pleasant time despite working hard. Um, and it definitely has forced a, a number of residents to choose inpatient, I think, based on uh, the experiences that they've had. Um, the exciting thing that's coming kind of in that venue is we have a new hospital that's being built right now. Uh, the anticipated opening for it is spring of 2023. It's a 52-bed uh, inpatient. It'll have a locked TBI unit as well. Um, it is currently under construction. It has been going pretty well. Uh, they are starting to get the outside finished. So I, based on the last meetings that we've had, they uh, should be opening in 2023, um, which will be exciting. 
there'll be some transition period um, where we go from the inpatient unit we have now over to this new one, but uh, I think that everyone in the chat here will be uh, spared that process. Um, other sites that we work at, the VA, it's about 15 minutes east of um, the UC Davis um, campus proper. Uh, there you get to work with uh, Dr. Shin in his amputee clinic. Dr. Hovis is a prior graduate. He is a pain fellowship trained. Uh, you get your pain medicine exposure here. Uh, again, day one, you get exposure. You're doing the procedures, which is fantastic. Um, and then Dr. Cordovine is the chair of PM&R over there. Um, who is a fantastic educator and kind of coordinates the, the various clinics that you go and work through there. Let's say the majority of it is um, MSK and spine related. Um, you get some occupational medicine exposure at Kaiser South Sac, which is about 20 minutes south um, of Sacramento. And it, this is a relatively small rotation you do uh, in between your third and your fourth year for uh, one day a week. Uh, for I'd say about a total of eight weeks, but it's good to get some uh, exposure to occupational medicine because um, that is a popular um, job for a lot of residents coming out who aren't doing fellowships. Um, our didactic schedule, uh, pretty broad, and, and I'd say uh, some points that I'd like to highlight would be the EMG conference, um, as well as the musculoskeletal ultrasound series. Um, so they go, so our EMG conference, um, runs year round as well as our MSK and the alternate weeks. Um, we cover all of the peripheral joints. Um, and then we've started getting, uh, Dr. Williams has really started to develop a curriculum for um, neuromuscular ultrasound and utilizing that along with EMG. Um, case conference uh, exposure while on inpatient as well as an anatomy series that's been tied in with that neuromuscular, or sorry, with that musculoskeletal ultrasound series. Oh, and I guess uh, for the scheduling portion of it, you have uh, Tuesdays are reserved for didactic, so you have this three-hour block every um, of protected time every Tuesday morning, and then an hour of protected time uh, Thursday mornings. Uh, resident didactics, there's a good mix of in-person as well as kind of like classic Socratic lessons. Um, on the right, we're doing practicing transfer training. We get to spend a decent amount of time with our therapists so that we actually get to understand what our patients are going through. Um, bottom left is a spinal orthotics lecture that I gave this past year. And we've got our Botox, uh, or sorry, our back lift and pump refill um, photo on the top. Uh, our EMG didactic series that goes along. So in the center, that's Dr. Williams working, uh, scanning the median nerve with the ultrasound. Uh, we get just some time to fool around with the EMG machine and really get comfortable with it. On the left, we're trying to see the effect of electronics. Um, on the electrodiagnostic machine, as well as the effects on temperature. And we have our uh, PGY3 Mitch, who's suffering with his hand in the cold water. Um, ultrasound didactics uh, on the left, we get these um, monthly where you get hands on a very nice ultrasound machine. So we get all of them from the clinic. We're showing up before um, they're starting to have patients go in. So you're getting hands on exposure, which is really the best way to learn ultrasound. Um, after clinic, anytime you're willing to stay, you have access to the machines as well, as well as a, a butterfly machine that's provided by the program. So after I rolled my ankle playing basketball, we have Brandon, uh, who's my roommate uh, and fellow PGY4, um, giving me a scan, making sure that all my ligaments are intact. Call schedule for us, we do seven weeks as a PGY2, five as a PGY3, and then three as a PGY4. Um, and then the holidays breakdown. So major holidays being Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's are four-day stints. Those are long ones to take call for. Um, but by taking care of those as a PGY2, you don't have any to worry about for the rest of the time. So that means you get all of these other days off. Uh, call is home call. So you take overnight coverage. You cover um, inpatient, which is a census anywhere from 12 to 19. PEDS, which usually hovers around 5 to 6. Um, and then taking patient calls and consults. Um, ours are split up between a, a weekday that runs Monday to Thursday, as well as a weekend. We set the call schedule at the beginning of the year so people can either choose to have their weeks consecutive or break them up to make it a little bit easier. Uh, resident research. So there is a uh, research requirement that everyone does one project over their 
three years at the program. Um, they are trying to expand our research program. I would say that if you are very interested in research, the areas that we kind of have the most would be gait analysis, neuromuscular disease, um, and sports. Dr. Herman has recently been brought on as a sports faculty to help bolster um, our research program. Um, but I would say that those are probably the three domains that we would have the uh, greatest resources. Um, I've started to work with the wound care department um, as well. So that's kind of a track that's being built, but as I would say, we're the main, main resource, uh, research resources that we have here. Um, if we look at our fellowships that we have available, so sports medicine fellowship uh, for PM&R, which is fantastic. Our pediatric rehab uh, medicine fellowship has recently been started to two-year fellowship. Um, so we are on our second fellow right now. And our neuromuscular disease fellowship is the only one in the country that's housed through the department of pm and um, And definitely I would say is a strength of our program. Um, where are our graduates going? Uh, so looking back just to 2019, um, we had a resident go to the UCLA DA pain fellowship, Stanford for sports, and uh, one returned home to inpatient rehab in LA. 2020, we matched UC Davis sports and had uh, other resident interested in uh, VA outpatient, another one went occupational medicine at Kaiser. Uh, 2021, everyone decided to go for a fellowship that year. So Cleveland Clinic uh, for sports, uh, Colorado University for pediatric pain, and then Lurie Sports um, in Chicago. Uh, and then this past year was a inpatient rehab heavy. It was uh, people returning home, Fresno, Salem, and Hawaii to return to inpatient rehab. And then this coming hey, year- Oops. Yes. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt. Um... The 20 minutes is up. Um, I guess folks, uh, you know, oh, Sacramento looks like a great place. Uh, yeah. You know, feel free to continue asking questions. Uh, 